expert. Do you think this is good for Caleb or bad for Caleb? And Nick has the Bears going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah, I heard about that. Yeah. I heard about that. Yeah. I, I see no argument that it is bad for Caleb Williams. I mean, Hard Knocks had a 13-year viewership high last year. Very successful season. Four and a half million people, roughly, per episode. This guy played in Hollywood. Week two, Sunday night football. He's going to be playing in front of 20 million people. What, he's afraid of cameras and microphones? Like, he was built in a lab for the spotlight. He has Denzel Washington's cell phone number. Like, this guy is not going to be intimidated by cameras and microphones and, like, oh, a hard knocks, like, Sports Illustrated cover jinx or something like that. Since 2009, 11 teams won more games after being on hard knocks, 2-1 two fewer, 2-1 two the same. Like, there's no adverse negative impact on being on the show. Now, I'm not saying there won't be weird things for the Bears, because they can be a little bit of a weird franchise. Their owner rides a scooter, and their coach has acronyms. Whoa, whoa, whoa. And just yeah, saying, hey, it's a little hey, weird for a billionaire to ride a scooter. scooter. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just, it's a little strange. <laughs> but look, look, their offensive coordinator is kind of a different guy, but for Caleb, he's going to be fine. Of the 21 teams that have been on hard knocks, only seven made the playoffs. Now, you could say, well, that's the level of the teams, but still, only one has gotten to the conference finals, the Jets in 2010. So that's yeah. that's who you're latching your wagon to. Guy. Well, okay, right. I don't but think... Here, go I, ahead, I, sorry. I, look, I don't think it's good for any team. And because it's not good for the Bears, I don't think it's good for Caleb. I don't think it's an unnatural environment when you got cameras around all the time. It just is. Some players will play to it because they want to show off or they want to build a brand or whatever. Some players will shy away from it, not be themselves. I, I wouldn't want cameras running around here all the time. We literally do. We, we do have some. <laughs> yeah. 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 some yeah. But still, it's not all the time. Like, I'm so I don't think I don't I can't see how any coach would want this. Well that okay the about and because it, no yeah. but if it's not good for the Bears it's not good for Caleb. Oh, so I so I disagree. I, I think it's terrible for these teams. So do you think that there are players on the team that like it? That like yes. the exposure. Okay, then but that's that why, doesn't mean it's good. No, but that's why it's good. Because some people want to show oh, off. Right, but that's why it's good for Caleb. Because part of Caleb's slight curb he's going to have to get over is some guys in that locker room were Justin Fields guys but now before the season even starts they are benefiting from being on Caleb Williams's team because they are now going to be more famous they are now going to have a higher Q rating they are now going to potentially locally or nationally be eligible for more endorsements and be more of an it team which players like which help allows him to more immediately be the leader of the team also Caleb, one of the benefits of NIL, in my opinion, is we there is you get an idea of, okay, what's this guy going to act like when he's rich and famous before you draft him? Mm -hmm. Caleb has been rich and famous for the last few years. He's living in a penthouse in Los Angeles. He is used to these things. He is used to, as Danny said, Hollywood, and I... I think this is going to be something where the only person I think it's going to be bad for is me and my Bears Super Bowl pick because that's not going to be as trendy anymore because a lot of people are going to be on it. Because I think that you're going to see that this team, people are going to realize, oh, wait, this wasn't some awful team last year. That's not how they got Caleb, which I know we talked about. I think that the average fan doesn't realize they won seven games and that this team is going to be good and exciting and Caleb's a charismatic guy. I don't know why it would – the only people to me it's – ever been bad for are coaches that look bad but not every coach has looked bad on hard knocks it's also pretty sanitized now I mean it is an well, NFL production teams I, do have a say in what comes out wasn't the last big scandal from hard knocks it, it doesn't have to be a scandal people there's a reason some things are on the record and some things are off the record but this because is all people off the act, record. act naturally off the record and I'm saying when you got cameras around all the time, it just – I wouldn't want – I don't think it's good for teams. Caleb, I agree with what you guys said. He's used to it. He'll be fine. But for a team, it's, a, it's as great for business. I don't think it's great for you football-wise. If he throws awesome touchdowns and he's running around doing his awesome Caleb stuff, yes, it will look great. But we have also made full-on stories about Aaron Rodgers' hobble watch – Hobbling around. Yeah. Tua threw one duck last year in training camp. Like, is he the guy? He just overthrew Tyreek Hill on a random, like, social media video. Like, we will do that. So, if there's something, you know, 
imperfect, which is going to be because he's never played an NFL football game. Well, hold on. We're gonna. That's going to be magnified. So, the but, highlights will be magnified. I get uh, it. Uh, the errors will be magnified. Right. So hold on. So I just I I don't totally understand that line of reasoning though, because if what you're saying is. If he's good, it's going to be magnified. Yes. If he's bad, it's going to be magnified. Well, I'm betting he's going to be awesome. I'm not saying he's. Not, I'm not saying bad. I'm not saying it's not a binary choice. Okay. I'm saying his hiccups in his development towards a superstar quarterback will be magnified. We will which know he more will about step him. into. We will know more about him. All, it's already happened with the reports that he struggled in, you know, OTAs. Well, Had a great OTA today, a big deal. Yeah, well, great great OTA, yeah, great OTA today. Okay. Josh, let's do the numbers on his uh, completion <laughs> percentage. Right, but so time in the pocket. 13 to 15. And Ooh, seven wow. on sevens. I got seven you. on Oh, sevens. there you go. Thank you for having that, Danny. No, that's fine. But I'm saying, but it, it can go both ways. How right. So it, right. So if it can go both ways, it is not definitively bad. I'm I am betting that the height that the news out of this is going to be holy crap, Caleb looks awesome. I tell them no, and they can't wait to call me selfish. Now, I'll put my journalism cap on. I listen to all of Chicken P's song. There's a chance that T. Higgins just likes Chicken P and has nothing to do with this contract, there's a chance it lines up and it's an editorially appropriate response for his Instagram <laughs> caption. Yeah. Just putting it out there. Uh, Mr. Parkins is here from Chicago where he did the herd. You can check him out on the herd. That, was <laughs> that makes every member of First Things First and all our guests who've been on the herd with one exception. That doesn't even work. It doesn't work. It was visiting. It was a great time. It was yeah, a great an issue uh, in the season. All right. Well, first of all, I wish you had the, those type of journalistic scruples when it went to, you know, hourglass emojis LeBron posted. Who knows? That could be from a great book or not. Oh, yeah. Who knows? Days of our lives. Uh, exactly. Uh, that's not how we did it then. Uh, of course it's an issue. I, first of all, slow starts plague this team. I don't expect T. Higgins to show up until days before the season because mm. he has no reason to because he's hadn't signed his franchise tag. They can't find him. Also, I agree with Adam Schefter. Schefter said and he got he yelled at on TV about it, and I don't like being yelled at on TV, so I feel badly for Adam, which is odd because I do a lot of yelling. I apologize. Um, saying, like, of course, if T. Higgins – has something that normally he might fight through injury-wise, that it would be totally reasonable for him to say, I don't have financial security long-term lock locked in. Yep. That's not dogging it. That's not being unfair. That's being pragmatic when you the team has refused to sign you to a deal, and I don't think he's risking anything. In a world where Jerry Judy just got $50 million and Nico Collins just got $70 million and Calvin Ridley got $90 million, T. Higgins is going to get paid. Yeah. So, yeah, I do think it is a – at least it is definitely not nothing. It is something, and it could be a significant something. I don't think I think it's as important as you, but it's, it's something. There's no doubt. Now, he did say in April, I expect to play for the Bengals, and I'll be there and all that. But you're right. He could show up late, and with their slow starts, it could be a factor. And, look, he, he, when he plays, he has to be great. If he ever wants a deal, right, whether it's from the Bengals or from some other team, you got to show you're going to be out there playing, especially with so many great wide receivers out there. Mm -hmm. So I think he does have to do that, but you're right. Does he play through the, the injury yes. or the when he's hurt but could play? Does he play through that or not? So it's something. I don't think it's as big as you, Nick, but it's definitely something. I think also the history with the Bengals here is relevant. There is an expiration date here. If they give a guy a franchise tag, they don't sign him. Going back to 2013, it's happened three times. Jesse Bates, A.J. Green, and Michael Johnson. All three guys play for someone else the next year after the franchise tag. So, like, since he is not going to sign him to a contract extension, which might make him less likely because he will get paid yes. to not be there. And people should remember how good this guy is because he was hurt last year. Missed five games due to injury. They won two of them. One was Arizona with Josh Dobbs, and one was the last game of the season when Cleveland was sitting everybody and Jake Browning was starting. Like, he absolutely matters to them this year. So if he's anything less than 100% bought in and committed, it's a huge deal. It's also why if we the folks if, – if I were one of the folks who years ago was saying should have draft Panay Sewell over Jamar Chase – I'd be calling it a classic category two right now. Oh. Because the Bengals, Bengals had Higgins, and he, he was already clear he was really good. And then they made the choice, are we going to double up on wide receiver or are we going to try to protect Burrow? Right. They, they went wide receiver. 
if they didn't have Jamar Chase's contract hanging out there, they would simply sign T. Higgins. Yeah, they've done a lot they, of winning with both those guys, though. Well, they, and Chase is clearly they, better. So if if, if you're they, look, you I, would have Higgins, but you wouldn't have Chase. No, but you. So maybe next year you have Chase, but you don't, or this year even, but you don't have. Right, Higgins. but you're still continually searching for your franchise tackle year after year after year. And Meanwhile, Burrow's been hurt. and Burrow's gotten hurt. That's but the that's other not just part the line. He got hurt no. rolling out in practice. No, no, well that part's true too. <laughs> yeah. And I don't know how he hurt his wrist. Right. Hey, Elliot Wolf, why don't you give a shout to Cincinnati? Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get more from the show and to check out clips from other shows on FS1.